Michelangelo makes this remarkable downstream career journey from the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., and then pops up in Alvin Bragg's office to go get Trump. And you're saying that's just a, that's just a career choice that was made that has nothing to do with the lawfare coordinated I'm by the I'm saying it's case. false. I did not dispatch Mr. Colangelo anywhere. Well, do you know how he ended up there? The audio files, close quote. Did they consult with you about that provision? I'm not going to talk about internal department deliberations. See, that was one of a the large number of explanations in the document you're talking about. And I'm talking specifically about that particularized rationale. And you don't want to discuss it, which is why you're non-responsive. And that's why we need the audio. Now, let me explain why. Attorney General, you've told us that it's a dangerous conspiracy theory to allege that the Department of Justice is communicating with these state and local prosecutions against Trump. You can clear it all up for us right now. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee all documents, all correspondence between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office? The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their own decisions. The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those communications? If you make a request, we'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, Affairs. But see, here's the thing. You come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request, and then we'll, we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Now, you're, you were a judge, once nominated the highest court in our country. When you were a judge, I'm just curious, did you ever make political donations to partisan candidates? No. No, and, and you didn't because that would create the potential appear, appearance of impropriety. I didn't it? because there's a federal rule oh. barring federal judges from making contributions. Right, but, but under that same theory of attacks on the judicial process, like shouldn't someone be owed like a jury of their peers and a judge that's non-biased rather than getting a judge from your political opponent's donor file? I'm well aware that you're not asking a hypothetical. You're asking me to comment on a verdict, jury verdict in a, another jurisdiction which has to be respected. I won't comment on it. That case is still ongoing. The defendant Mr. Attorney indicated. General, I, I hadn't asked you about the verdict yet. We were getting there. I was, I was talking about the judge. And so, so let me ask you this question about your time as, as a judge. Was there ever a time when you were a judge when you had a family member who was personally profiting off of the notoriety of a case that, that was before your court. Look, I'm gonna say again, it's very clear you're asking me to comment on a case in another jurisdiction. No, 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 wait, hold on, hold on, Mr. Attorney General. Did you ever have a family member profit off of the notoriety of any case that you sat over? Say again, you're asking me. Yes or no? Me, you're asking me to comment on a case currently. Well, it seems you're connecting the dots, court. Mr. Attorney General. I'm just asking you as to a general principle, but you are aware that Judge Mershon's daughter was profiting off of this prosecution. You are aware that that creates the appearance of impropriety. You know the very reason there's a federal rule against judges giving donations is because it is the very attack on the judicial process that we're concerned about. I'm sorry, I don't agree with anything you just said, but I'm not going to comment on it. Okay, on so you won't comment on it, Mr. Court. Attorney General, but you had no problem dispatching Matthew Colangelo. Who's Matthew Colangelo? That is false. I did not dispatch Matthew Colangelo. Matthew That's Colangelo, false. Matthew false. Colangelo became the Assistant Attorney General at the very beginning of the Biden administration, without having been Senate confirmed, goes and gets this senior role at the DOJ, and then after, I believe it's uh, Gupta replaces Colangelo, Colangelo makes this remarkable downstream career journey from the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., and then pops up in Alvin Bragg's office to go get Trump. And you're saying that's just a, that's just a career choice that was made that has nothing to do with the lawfare coordinated I'm by the I'm saying it's false. I did not dispatch Mr. Colangelo anywhere. Well, do you know how he ended up there? 
I assume he spoke, uh, he applied for a job there and got the job. But see, you know I what? I tell you, know you I had nothing to do with it. Well, you might not have had anything to do with it, but we've got this contemporaneous evidence in Mr. Pomerantz's book. So Pomerantz writes this book, which I'm sure you're aware of, where he says, we put together the legal eagles to get Trump. We got all these folks together and we assembled them for that purpose. And so when, when we on the Judiciary Committee think about attacks on the judicial process, our concern is that you, the, the facts and the law aren't being followed. A target is acquired here, Trump, and then you assemble the legal talent from DOJ, Mr. Pomerantz, and you bring everybody in to get him. I, I really, I, 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 and meanwhile, the judge is making money on it. The I, judge is making money on it. The judge's family is making money on it for stuff that you yourself wouldn't do. You know, no one's going to buy this. No one's going to believe it. It's going to create great disruption. And I am saddened by it because like you, I have given my life to the law. I care deeply about the law. And I think that the lawfare we've seen against President Trump will do great damage well beyond our time in public service. I see my time's expired. I and, uh, Mr. Attorney General, the, the reality is Mr. Herr, Special Counsel Herr, found that President the then former Vice President, President Biden, had retained and disclosed um, classified information. Isn't that true? Um, Mr. Herr has presented a long report. Isn't that true? I mean, come on. I'm, I'm practically quoting right from it. You, you wouldn't disagree with I that disagree assessment? I disagree with, with, I'm not going to comment on his report. He sets forth, I appointed him to investigate right. the allegations okay. about classified documents. So Mr. the Biden. reason that we end up talking over you is because a simple question like that goes unanswered. You're non-responsive. You're non-responsive to the question. Because that is what, what Mr. Herr found. And then he also found, and, and you're not gonna like this because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna quote from it, uh, from this, he, say, he basically says here that he, he found Mr. Biden to be sympathetic and uh, here he is, a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. And so he made a prosecutorial decision that he wasn't going to prosecute. Are you going to dispute that? You're not disputing that, are you? Mr. Herr's report. Okay, you're going to say it stands on its own. I'm okay, sorry. so his, it stands on its own. No, because you don't an, you, you're not intent on answering. You want to be non-responsive. You want, want to filibuster. I'd like to answer your question. Do you dispute that? So let's just face it. Mr. Biden has not been prosecuted, correct? That's correct. And the rationale given by Mr. Herr is because he was a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory, and he thought the jury would have sympathy towards Mr. Biden. That was get... one of a long list of reasons that Mr. Herr gave for his decision. That give me one was... more reason. He found that, look, I, I don't want to go, get into a discussion about this, but I will say one of them was that the president was co completely cooperative uh, in this matter. That... <laughs> That's the reason, huh? Okay, all right. You well, asked the me issue, one of the reasons. The issue, that was one the, of the, issue, the issue that we have here, you don't want to give us the audio tape. You don't want us to have the recording. But ultimately, the issue is whether the transcript actually supports the special counsel's determination. Now, your office has, ple has basically pled two things in court claiming, number one, executive privilege, and number two, this kind of interesting novel approach saying fake, uh, deep fakes, AI. Right, did you, did they consult, did your, did your staffer who filed that, did they consult with you about the deep fake AI uh, rationale for not providing the audio to us? You're mischaracterizing the filing. That was one of, a, again, a substantial number of arguments made in a Freedom of Information. Did they consult with you specifically about that idea, My. that notion where they were going to say something like, quote, this is from the pleading. The passage of time and advancements in audio, artificial intelligence, and deep fake technologies only amplify concerns about malicious manipulation of audio files, close quote. Did they consult with you about that provision? I'm not going to talk about internal department deliberations. See, that was one of the, the large number of explanations in the document you're talking about. And I'm talking specifically about that particularized rationale. And you don't want to discuss it, which is why you're non-responsive. And that's why we need the audio. And let me explain why. Because your, your um, attorney 
also said that you did alter the transcript. And they said it was filler words, repeat words, and, and, I, I. But you know what? We don't know whether the blank, he said there were blank times where there was silence. We don't know whether those were one minute long, two minutes long. We don't know if he sputtered for and, 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 because those were edited out. We do not know whether this supports and substantiates Mr. Hur's findings. By the way, you, you, you want to rely on Mr. Hur, you, you need to go back and listen to his testimony. Mr. Hur was pretty conclusive there that we have that, this, that he had a, a poor memory. He was not able to answer all the questions. Substantively, the transcript may be accurate, but you know what? The audio would tell us so much more, which is why, which is why the Supreme Court, in the case that you poo-pooed when Mr. Fitz, Fitzgerald was asking about, they, they said, look, you know, if there's editing that's gone on here, that's the rationale, and there was editing. Your own office admitted it, but you won't admit it today. You've been non-responsive, and that's why we need the audio, and that's why you're here. Yield back. Yeah, Gentleman yields back. Mr. Chairman of the United States.